I think in general it's important for future research and innovation projects to include standardization as early as possible. And I think it's important to have transparency and clear communication to everyone involved what to expect and what our plan is and to be really clear and practical about what we want to achieve. So maybe have a standardization roadmap already from the start with a clear idea, a clear understanding of all participants of where we're heading and how are we going to achieve this. I'm Serene Hanania, I work for ICLE Europe, ICLE Local Governments for Sustainability. ICLE is a global network of over 1,700 local governments and regions who work together towards urban sustainability. In recent years, we have been bringing in the standardization component more prominently into our projects. A couple of the first projects which had the standardization component, which started a while back, were the Smart Mature Resilience Project and another project called Climate Resilient Cities and Infrastructures. The Smart Mature Resilience Project was a European Commission funded research and innovation project that had the purpose of enhancing the resilience of European cities. It had a large number of actors. We had seven cities on board with us from day one as well as researchers and a city network us, as well as a national standardization body. All of us working together to develop a European resilience management guideline, along with five practical tools to enhance the city's capacities in order to adapt to and respond to and recover from the negative impacts of climate change. standardization and a standardization organization were included in the project from the very beginning with a whole working group dedicated to them. We took the city's needs as our starting point. What did the cities need in terms of urban resilience and what did they need in terms of infrastructure? And then there was a twofold process that the standardization body undertook. It looked at the market and so okay what standards are existing in this field and what is SMR producing as tools and then identifying the gap and seeing where the SMR tools can fill in this gap and which tools or which aspects can be then translated into standards. We basically turn the resilience maturity model and the information portal into send workshop agreements. So these are not standards per se. These are now available, publicly available for everyone. Everyone can access them for free. And in a few years, they will be revised and can potentially be upgraded into a standard, which is then another process that has to be undertaken. The biggest benefit of having the standardization aspect in the project was transferring the results and making them available to a wider audience, basically to everyone. And the other aspect was that we were able to take in the expertise and the um, knowledge we had in the project and bring it on into the international standardization processes. So more specifically the ISO TC 268 on sustainable cities and communities. And then the added value was also the fact that we had these experts um, who were external to the project, who were not project partners, come in and contribute to the standardization process, which meant that the document had additional um, impact, additional reliability and more input and applicability. Standardization can act as the bridge or the link between research and innovation and the market, which is, I think, quite important to make sure that the results of research and the results of innovation really have a lasting impact, so to say, and reach as many people as possible. I do think that the role of standardization is going to be increasingly seen in research and innovation, and I think this is um, really important. It's a two-way road in the sense that um, research and innovation activities increase the reliability and applicability as well as the technical content of standards. Whereas on the other hand, having these science-based standards is also important for practitioners in order to develop more uh, robust policies, so to say. And I really think that standardization bodies should be included as early as possible to really achieve a maximum benefit for both sides and to really bring change and bring lots of wonderful outcomes of research and innovation to the market.